Spotted gum is a beautiful Australian native hardwood species with a very special story. It starts in the forest and loops back to the forest because for every tree harvested to use in our schools, homes and communities, at least one more tree is replanted. These voices from the forest are excited to share the renewable and sustainable spotted gum story. Stepping inside the nursery production shed, seeds that have been collected from trees in the seed orchard are sown into growing trays on the sowing line. The seeds are then driven in here, the covered growing area, where they'll be kept moist until they germinate. Once they've germinated, they'll be taken out into the nursery. These seedlings are five months old. There's about 30,000 spotted gum seedlings just in this little batch here. My name's Darcy Wheatley. Um, so we're up here in northern New South Wales planting some spotted gum. Um, we've had a fair bit of rain around at recently, so it makes it um, really good weather to plant them, so it can be sustained until the next rain. Um, as you can see, we just walk onto preform rows um, and plant these probably about 20 mil below the soil, above the plug. Um, the trees obviously work well in the environment. They also collect carbon um, and it's building towards a sustainable timber industry in the future. The trees are now 18 months old. In these early stages, grazing cattle are excluded. Until then, foresters manually slash any weeds that compete for nutrients and light with our small growing trees. At eight years of age, the spotted gums have gained good height and the weeds beneath are being managed through cattle grazing. And they are standing much taller at 15 years old. One element of forest management is pruning, which helps eliminate any defects and the knots in the timber. At 18 years, you can see the trees have really achieved some vertical growth and the diameter of each tree is getting thicker. G'day, I'm Sebastian. I work in forestry. Today we'll be doing a high prune on these 18-year-old trees, which is roughly three quarters of the way up. This cherry pricker goes 12 metres high. So, hold on. This is the chainsaw I'll be using today. It requires a chainsaw ticket. Taking a look around this inventory plot, you'll see a forester doing some forest measurements for planning. Using her diameter tape, she records tree diameter measurements into her tablet. To measure the height of the trees in this plot, she points a laser beam from a tool called a vertex, which tells her it's 20.3 metres tall. Hi, I'm Rachel Kavanagh and I work for the Aboriginal Partnerships team for Forestry Corporation. Um, I'm really lucky to be in this position as we get to engage with the local traditional owners to come out and manage their cultural heritage sites and put in their own prescriptions around how they want that site managed. We have children that come out and elders and so we tell the whole storyline of, of the landscape and why we do the things that we do. Um, and it's really exciting that forestry is starting to take on those Indigenous sciences in partnership with community. There's lots of different reasons why we use the bush, hey. We also can find things for our dead. Yeah, and look what I've just spotted down there. What's that? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, and what do we use these for? Um, our skirt. Yeah, and we put our feathers in them. I get to record some sites that are over 10,000 years old. Um, anything from artefacts to you know, scar trees to um, large campsites um, and artwork in caves. So that's pretty amazing. One of the exciting things we get to do is pre and post harv harvesting um, survey work. G'day, my name's Al Green. I drive this uh, timber harvester. Today we're going to go and fall a few trees. Okay, jump up in the cab with me and we'll go. Modern harvesters are highly technical with scanners and computer systems. They're all hydraulically driven and the grapples holding on the trunk can also help hold and guide the tree to fall in the best place to minimise damage to the surrounding bush. Mm. 
Looking down on the forest from this height, you can see there is minimal disruption to the rest of the forest during these selective harvesting operations. After careful sustainable forest planning, only selected trees are removed from the forest. Sustainable forest management is the key to managing forests for the long term, with forest inventory and surveys helping to ensure that the trees that show features for wildlife habitat, like nesting hollows, remain in the forest. In this native forest, the small gaps now created through selective harvesting will be regenerated to the original forest species mix to start the forest cycle again. The spotted gum story doesn't end when it leaves the forest, as it's just beginning its processing story. To be used and loved within our schools, buildings and furniture. Out of everyday sight, thousands of new seedlings are being replanted, back in plantation forests or regenerated in native forests, for the spotted gum story to begin again for generations to come. Wood really is the ultimate renewable resource.